Good morning. Happy Monday. Oh, I forgot my earphones. So, um, I've been sick for like four days and I'm finally better. I feel great. I don't want to have to try to yell because I, I kind of don't have a voice, um, but I do feel a lot better than I have felt uh, last Wednesday. I started feeling sick, and then by Thursday I couldn't, I couldn't even move. Um, I was so sick. I had like it felt like the flu, not the keto flu, because I am not that strict with keto diet, even though I try to make the right choices every meal I'm not like perfect on keto so I, I knew it wasn't keto flu um, but I think it was like a real daycare germ kind of flu but I feel a lot better now I got a lot of rest and so I'm back to talk to you guys again thank you to everybody who uh, messaged me and called me to see how I was I'm losing my I'm losing my voice already so I had to keep this short because I had to just conserve my voice for the day I do have some hot tea with Theraflu in it because yeah Theraflu was my magic cure seriously I just had like the whole box two boxes of Theraflu in two days and that's what really helped me I think um because I really felt like I needed something hot on my throat. This whole section of my face and throat and neck, all this was on fire, and I had body aches and pain. So, anyway, I'm better now. Um, so, it's Magic Money Monday, and as you know, I kick my intuition to the curb to talk to you on Mondays about money and law of attraction as it relates to your money. And I answer questions from the Facebook group. So, and I'm going to I'm gonna give myself a lot of grace today. I'm going to go slow and I'm going to breathe so that I don't cough and all that good stuff. If you have any question for me, leave it in the comments and I will answer it for you. I'll answer it from the perspective of Dave Ramsey teachings. I will answer it from the perspective of my own experience, and I'll answer it from the perspective of Law of Attraction. That is what I'll do. So for this episode of Magic Money Monday, I want to answer this question from a girl named Rachel, who, um, it was a really long question that she put up, but it was so powerful. So she... Um, she and her husband have been married for a while now and he was an engineer he made a lot of money like uh, not quite six figures but almost a hundred thousand dollars a year and she got to be a stay-at-home mom and homeschool her kids and all that good stuff well he decided that you know what this online business world is really a thing I don't know anything about it, but I think I can do it. And um, he realized how much he was missing out on because his job, his nine to five job, he was working more than 40 hours a week and he had to travel two and a half weeks out of the month. So they had all these little kids. I think they had like five kids and um, he was missing out on stuff. And their one-year-old was diagnosed with a neurologic disease. So he was like, you know what? This is for the birds. Like, this is not what life is meant to be. And I totally agree. Like, this is why I love this question. Because this last year, around this time, a little bit earlier in the summer of 2018, I was feeling this. I was like, I had, I had gone back to work after maternity leave happily because I loved my job and as my kids I started to realize that like I, my job and my kids couldn't coexist in the way that they were at that current time and I was being late to work and I was um, 
being late to home and it was just like my whole life was all messed up so I got a different job which went well for a while and then I started working at the job that I do now which was going well too but it was just like something was missing my confidence was broken I had the whole PTSD issue from the previous jobs workplace bullying situation and I was like you know what I've tried this this is my fourth job I was, I'm the kind of person I'm like a franchise player right like I will work at the same place the whole time my whole life and I realized that I, that wasn't going to be possible first of all the culture had changed and so people didn't work like that anymore that's why you know things are changed they'll, they'll burn you out then they'll just replace you like there's no loyalty on either part so I was like things can't exist this way anymore and I felt really sad about not working the same job forever but it was like this is my fourth job and I'm still right back in the same place something's got to give so then I heard about the financial independence movement and I was like it just fit I was like this is so me so I can relate to what this guy was feeling because he he discovered the financial independence movement and realized that there could definitely be a better way. So he quit his job. Now, I did not quit my job. I do not advocate for anyone to quit their job. What I advocate for is what Jim Rohn says, double your income. Work on your nine to five full-time job and work on your side hustle until your side hustle replaces your nine to five full-time salary and you're basically making double the amount that you make. (coughs) If you can make the same amount working part-time as you do full-time, there comes a point when it is ridiculous for you to keep both. Right? There comes a point where you're like, I make I matched my salary now I can go so that is what I advocate if you discover the fire and you discover a plan that'll get you to financial independence and you can retire early from your nine-to-five job because you are making the same amount and with your side hustle then quit your job don't do it beforehand so he didn't get that memo he was super excited and plus like I said he was his kid was diagnosed with something so he quit before he had made up the money so this put them in a a little bit of a financial quandary they had some situations and this was her question so luckily for her she has a really great guy who despite this you know thing that he did (laughs) with them He came to her and he was like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing with the money. I do not know how to handle finances. My family, my parents never taught me how. They taught me how to do everything on credit. Nobody taught me how to do this. Could you please help? Because I'm about to really get us foreclosed on. The cars are going to be repossessed. Like we are in a bad situation. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to tell you guys. Women are better financial managers than men. Do not let the fact, and I'm talking to ladies because I'm talking to ladies. I I see too many ladies, and I was one of them, who feels like because a man is looking sharp, has a nice office, wears a, a tailored suit, that they know what's better for you and your money than you do. That's not true. I spent 10 years, maybe 12, handing over all my financial decisions to a financial planner who was not acting in my best interest. Only you will act in your own best interest, not even your spouse. So at the very least, work on your finances together with your spouse. Don't leave it to him because he's the man and he should know how money works. That's not how it works. The person who is the most educated about money knows how money works, not the person who is the male. That's not how it works, okay? So when he told her that, luckily he told her that, he told her like just in the nick of time, he told her that he was not doing a good job with the money and she needed to take over. When she did, she realized like what bad trouble they were in and 
was like, okay, how are we going to put this back together again? Um, so it was good that he was honest and open with her. So that's why I say he's a really good man because a lot of men would not have let their ego put their ego down to admit, like, I, I don't know what to do. Like I messed up big time. So she had some experience and she was, you know, a Dave Ramsey follower and all this stuff. So she could kind of know what to do. And, um, she started working the plan. So she had some questions about things, you know, ideas and suggestions. And I just took the first part of her question and I wanted to talk to you guys about it because some people were in the same position. So Dave Ramsey has a, a structure called the baby steps, which is brilliant. There is nothing else that you need. If you understand the baby steps, you can be rich. Like whatever your definition of rich is, as long as you understand the baby steps because they're in order and all you have to do is follow them. So this couple was basically at baby step zero, meaning that they were um, in over their heads. They were super duper in hot water. The house was about to become foreclosed on. The cars were about to become possessed. All their credit cards were past due. All of their bills were past due. So baby step zero is when you're not current on everything. Like some things are really big in hot water, and that's where they were. And what to do when you're in this situation so that's the question what does it mean to go gazelle intense what does it mean to start off in baby step zero and dig yourself out of hot water and get completely out of debt so last year in january of 2018 i got a call that my car payment had not been paid in three months and i was like what that's crazy i pay all my bills you got the wrong person because i do but what I had, um, what what actually we messed up on was when we got the car, um, the payments were coming automatically from an account that we subsequently closed. So when I really looked at it, they were right. The payments were hitting this account that we closed and it was of course getting rejected. And so for three months, my car note wasn't paid. So essentially in January of 2018, I was at baby step zero. We were not current on our on our car payment. Um, and it was all because I wasn't paying close enough attention to the finances. This is what I've learned to do now. I pay attention and I've educated myself to where now I know what's better for me than the money managers. I fired the money managers about three or four months later. I know what I'm doing. It's working out well teaching other people how to do it you don't need it's not complicated it's very very simple you don't need other people to manage your money for you because all they're going to do is manage your money for them you can manage your money for yourself it's not complicated they make it sound complicated to discourage you from being able to do it but it's not complicated so here's the thing if you're in baby step zero you're in crisis mode if things are being threatened, you know, to take away your way of life, like take away your um, your home, your cars, you know, this is like you have IRS debt and they're going to come and garnish your wages, all this stuff. You're in crisis mode. When you are in crisis mode, you need to get gazelle intense. Dave Ramsey tells this story and I think it's worth repeating because it was the exact thing that helped me to stop being a spoiled brat and to start to realize exactly what I needed to do if I was going to fix my life last year. Because I was a really spoiled brat. Like, I spoiled myself. I, I knew what I wanted. I felt like I worked hard and I could get whatever I wanted. He tells a story about watching, um, was it Discovery Channel? animal planet nat geo something like that you know those channels where they have like the wildlife documentaries and he he kind of like stopped on it because it was something kind of interesting happening there was a gazelle that was peacefully grazing and there was a lion no it was a cheetah that was watching it and so the cheetah jumped down and started chasing the gazelle the gazelle's running and he's saying, you know how this is going to end, right? You know how it's going to end. Like, the cheetahs are the fastest mammal on earth. 
So, you know, the gazelles, they're running, they're, you know, trying to go sideways and zigzag and pretty much get the cheetah tired out from chasing him so they don't get eaten. And the, and the gazelle ends up getting away. And that's the way he likens crisis mode for us. Until you get to baby step three, you're in crisis mode because it's life or death for you. And I know that's kind of, you know, harsh to say, but really it's life or death. When you are threatened with being losing everything, now if you have a little debt and it's a portion of your paycheck and you're still able to save, that's different. But if you have so much debt, like for me, once I looked at my accounts, I was spending $2,000 more every month than I was bringing in. And that was all going on my credit card. So I was never going to catch up. So that was life or death because eventually that little house of cards was going to collapse. Right? And when you're when your things are being threatened, like your home, your cars, all these things are being threatened, you have no savings because savings are literally for a rainy day because if it like we're in Houston if there's a hurricane or a tropical storm and we have roof damage or something that we need to pay for immediately and we have no savings that's a real serious issue the car breaks down you can't get to work you lose your job you know the cold cascade you go through in your head when you have when you're in a crisis mode in crisis mode where you are if you have a lot of debt or if you are underwater on your payments there's some things that you need to do like they are not negotiable if you want to get out of crisis mode let me stop here and say this your net worth does not mean it's not your self-worth like if you have debt that does not mean that you're a bad person if you have debt it doesn't mean that you're a worthless person, that you're some deadbeat scumbag. Like, that is not what it means when you have debt. The two have nothing to do with each other. Money is energy. It's a made-up concept anyway, right? You could get rocks off the ground and say, okay, these rocks are worth $50 each. Like, it doesn't matter. Money has no, no real value. A nickel, I'll tell you guys this, a nickel used to actually be made of nickel, and it was worth five cents. Now a nickel is like a mixture of metals and it takes the government seven cents to make a nickel, which tells you right there how smart the government is because if it costs more to make the stupid coin than the coin is worth, this is going to collapse also. I'm getting too excited. I have to raise the temperature in my car and I have to slow down and stop talking so much because I'm going to start coughing and I'm going to lose my voice so do not feel like if you have debt that you're a bad person because you're not you're not do not feel like if you cannot control your spending that something is wrong with you because there's not as long as you're breathing you get another chance to start over but I say all that to say if you're in crisis mode you're going to have to make some changes and they're not going to be comfortable, but it's totally going to be worth it. So, and I, I always say, you know, this is fun. This is easy. It's fun. But I'll tell you at the time that it's happening, I wasn't, I wasn't skipping through the tulip fields and feeling like, Oh, this is great. I'm in crisis mode. No, it was painful. Every month I canceled between one and three services every month so let me tell you what it means to go gazelle intense when it's life or death when you know that you need to make a change it means that you have to do the following things you will have to stop buying brand named things from the supermarket you will have to stop you will have to start buying the supermarket labeled things for one thing it's the same thing but also you will find that you can compromise on those brand names and still have a good you know meal it's not it doesn't affect it that much 
and with things that you find that it it does affect it like it doesn't work as well if it's not if, if it's not the brand go back to the brand on those specific things not everything don't be ashamed it also means that you cannot eat out at restaurants all the time or even ever <laughs> Dave Ramsey has this thing where he says, if you can afford to eat out at a restaurant, you can afford to tip tip the total or something like that. Like, if it comes out to, like, $23, your tip should be $23. Like, if you can afford to eat out at a restaurant, you should be able to double it. Like, that's when you know you can go. Apart from that, go home and cook. These are This is another thing you'll have to give up. I used to go and get the eyelashes done, like the individual lashes placed by a lash technician every single month. I had a membership. I had to cancel my membership. I had to negotiate on how I was going to get my other lashes done. And I had to start wearing ma- mascara. I had to just wear mascara. Like I couldn't go and get the fancy expensive rich lady lashes anymore because I couldn't afford it it was not a priority while I was in crisis mode I had to stop getting mani pedis I do not get my nails done I'm about to add that service back in because I'm finally at the point where I can afford it but in crisis mode you can't, you can't fool yourself. You've been lying to yourself. If you say, I can afford something, yet you're buying it on a credit card. No. If you're selling a credit card and you're not paying it off every single month, you can't afford it. In crisis mode, you should not be shopping. Shopping is when you go to a store, you don't have a list, you don't have anything in particular that you want or need. You just got to look around and see what you might want. Esther Hicks says, looking for something to want. Do not do that. Stay out of Target. Target's always going to show you something you want. Stay out of, even the fancy grocery stores are so nice. It just makes you feel like you want stuff. I started shopping at Walmart. It's a dreary, dreary place. But you go there, you get what you need, you leave. It's hard to not get distracted. But at least it's not pretty. You're in crisis mode. You have to be creative with how you exercise. You can't get a fancy gym membership. You can't pay, you know, all this money per month to go to the gym. You have to figure out how you're going to work out at home. You got to figure out how you're going to go to the park and work out. How you're going to use the walls for resistance. How you're going to use water bottles, I think are a pound. Put a bunch of them in a bag and lift them. You know what I mean? Like, you got to get creative. That's what I did. I got creative about how I was going to do the things of my life without spending money. We called, I, should, I shouldn't say we, I called every single utility and service and negotiated a lower rate or canceled them. Found a cheaper one. I used to have AT&T for like 15 years. I was in a loyalty program because I had it so long. They were very shocked and surprised when I canceled, but I canceled it and we saved probably $100 a month. I loved my AT&T service, but we canceled it because we needed to save the money to go gazelle intense because it's life or freaking death. We... I canceled, I had Sirius XM radio in my car that I loved. I listened to it all the time. But as part of me discovering the fire movement, I was listening to podcasts by Fire Drill. All these millennials who were teaching you how to get out of debt, I was listening to their podcasts. So I was like, well, I'm going to cancel XM radio. It was like $15 a month or something like that. Canceled that. I did not cancel Audible. I still had my books because it was valuable to me. I kept that the whole time. But I changed the kind of books I was listening to. I wasn't listening to murder mysteries and that kind of thing anymore. I started listening to personal development, which started to help me on the journey. We canceled the cable. We can't. We didn't have cable TV anymore. We just used Netflix or uh, Roku. It's like um, $10 now. I think it's up to like $12 a month. 
our cable was $167 a month. We canceled that. We realized you cannot afford to watch network TV, ma'am. Like you cannot. You're spending $2,000 more than you make per month. You gotta, you can't, you can't. We, I started using cash. You know, that's something I hadn't done. Cash to me was for poor people, okay? I was like, you only have cash if you can't, if you don't have good credit, you don't have a credit card. That's how I felt. And I had to take a big old slice of humble pie to realize that, guess what, ladybug? You think cash is for poor people? Just because you think that you look rich, you are so far in underwater, you're poor. You need to get yourself together and stop this mentality. Some of the richest people use cash. Some of the richest people, and that's why they're rich. You need to get on a budget. You need to stop spending. And this is, I keep saying you need to, but this was me talking to me. Every single month, I would look at the numbers again. I was going through. I mean, I was writing it out. Like, I have to write it. That's just my learning style. Even if the bank is recording it digitally, I had to write it. I was writing out every single expense, every single expense, every single expense. And as I wrote it out, I looked at it. I said, is this valuable to me? Does this make sense to keep paying this? Do I still want this? I had magazine subscriptions. I didn't even have time to read magazines. I canceled those. My daughter and my son were both in swim classes. My son hated to swim. I canceled his first. I let my daughter swim some more. She loved to swim. I said, you know what? This child is two years old. We can always come back to swim classes in a couple years. We can always come back. She can always relearn how to swim. She loves it. She's very sports oriented. I was like, this is, this is totally fine. Like I felt a lot of guilt and a lot of shame about that because one thing I wanted was for my kids to have everything, right? When I was little, I wanted to be in gymnastics. All my friends were in gymnastics, but my mom was a single mom and there was no way to get me to practice. And there was no way to like do all the stuff you had to do to be on the team. And, um, I couldn't do it. And to this day, that still hurts. I didn't want to do that to my kids. I felt that hurt all over again. But I took my daughter out of swim class. I said, you know what? Swim class is, I think it was like $35 a month or something like that. Whatever it was, um, maybe it was $40. Whatever it was, I was like, you know what? She can come back when she's four or five years old, when we're out of debt, when we can actually afford it right now we're kidding ourselves if we think we can afford it because we can't so I took my daughter out of swim we saved some money we just I just kept every single month I go through the numbers I go through the bills that we were paying and I would say can I live without this I even kept a list of things that I decided that I could live without I kept a list of it because I at some point, I wanted to look back and say, look at what you did. Look at how much you sacrificed to get out of debt. We had two homes. We had a home we lived in. We had the rental house that we had moved from. We were going to move back to that house. That's why we were keeping it. And we said, you know what? We can't afford this house. We are one disaster away from catastrophe. And unfortunately... At the beginning of 2019, that disaster happened. The roof was leaking. The tenants in there could not be bothered to notify us that the roof was leaking. So they let it go until it was moldy and it was a horrible mess. And they, he called me and he sent me pictures of the thing. And I thought, that's it. We're ruined. We can't even afford to fix this. We're selling the house. We had to fix it up and sell it. And we had life insurance through the financial planners I was telling you about and the payments the payments for the life insurance was two thousand dollars a month it was a scam it was a total joke and it was like we spend two thousand dollars a month more than we make and I'm giving you two thousand dollars I mean that right there should click like here's the problem we had to cancel that 2018, when I realized all this, 
I started going around my house looking at all the things that I didn't use things that were still nice that I didn't use that I didn't want anymore they could start over and instead of packing them all up and giving them the goodwill I did something I had never done before it was scary it was brand new to some people it's just like oh yeah that's easy to me it was hard I had never done it before I went on eBay I listed everything I listed my wedding dress I listed old bridesmaids dresses that I had, you know, you wear once and then what do you do? So I listed those. I listed gifts that were given to us that we never used and didn't really, you know, didn't really have a need for. Really nice gifts. I listed those things on eBay. So many things I put up on eBay. I learned a lot about how to ship things. I learned a lot about how to pack things, how to fill orders. I learned how to use eBay. And that's one thing that Dave Ramsey advocates if you're going gazelle intense is that you sell so much stuff at garage sales and on eBay that your kids and the dog think that they're next. I sold so much stuff on eBay. I was selling things. I was asking my husband, hey, somebody just bought such and such. Where's the other part of it? I need to ship it out today. And he's going, hey, don't sell that. You can't sell that. I had to refund people's money back. Because I was so gazelle intense on selling things on eBay, I was selling things that I did not own. Like, he was like, I am not selling that. So I had to write people messages, I'm sorry, my husband, you know, this is my husband's, and he said he didn't want to sell it, oops, you know, I'm going to refund your money. And they were cool about it, they were like, okay, fine. But that is what you will have to do. You will have to swallow your pride. You have to do some things you've never done before. And you will have to be gazelle intense, like it's life or death. Like you are literally an animal, a zebra, running from a lion. The lion is going to devour you and your family. You're a gazelle. You're running. You're you're zigging and zagging because the cheetah is going to devour you. It's true. Now you don't have to pay off every single debt. Now if you're if you're a big Dave Ramsey person, you do need to pay off every single debt. But I know a lot of people don't don't feel the way about debt as financial independence people do. So I'm not saying you have to pay off every single debt. But if you have a debt that's emotionally charged for you, if you have a debt that's holding you back, even if it doesn't have interest on it, even if it's not a debt like your car note, even if it's a debt that's just like you, um, you know, your mother-in-law or your father-in-law gave you guys some money when you got married so you could buy a house or whatever you haven't paid it back yet and there's no interest on it it's not a big deal except that it's all you think about you know when they call there's always this kind of undertone of stress of like I owe you because debt does change relationships when you owe somebody something you know the borrower the borrower is the slave to the lender So if you owe somebody something, then you will never feel at peace and they will always have something over your head. So if you have a debt like that, that's emotionally charged, that makes you feel like crap, then you need to, why are they protesting in my job? I don't even understand what's happening. Then you need to pay that back, pay that off. You don't have to pay every single thing off, but you need to at least pay off that um okay I don't know what's happening pay that um, particular debt off and get that spiritually out of your life and speaking of spirituality um, when you talk see my voice I'm losing it it's going I'm getting froggy when you're talking about going gazelle intense um, it doesn't start off fun you, you feel deprived at first but as you see those debts being knocked out and knocked out and knocked out and you actually feel the weight lifting from your shoulders and sometimes you don't even realize there's a weight on your shoulders until it's getting off and then you go oh my gosh I can't believe it this is this is nice you know you break even so now it's you're not now you're not spending more than you make now you're spending as much as you make so you're not going in the hole anymore you are current. You get current on the bills that are outstanding and you start moving forward and you get into baby step one 
where you can save a little bitty emergency fund. Once you got that saved, you get into baby step two where you can line up these debts and start knocking them down. Line them up, knock them down. And that's an amazing feeling of accomplishment. And you can suddenly start feeling where this is going. And you say, okay, I can see where this is going. I can see that one day, one day this debt is going to be a memory. One day I'm going to, I'm going to take home everything I make and it's going to be mine and not already spent. It's an amazing feeling. So that is what I wanted to tell you guys today. Um, to answer Rachel's question about what do you do when you're in crisis mode? And I'll tell you, it's not fun, but is it fun to be in crisis mode, right? It's not fun to, it's not fun to have to sell all the crap out of your house, but it's also not fun to put stuff back at the grocery store. It's not fun to sit late at night and try to figure out how you're going to make ends meet which is one of my least favorite phrases that I used to hear all the time in childhood making ends meet I hate that so you do what you have to do and the thing is the better the faster you realize that you have to make some changes and the faster you make those changes the quicker the amount of time that you can get back to normal so what's the worst that can happen three years if you're practicing law of attraction it's not gonna be three years but let's say worst case scenario it'll be three years with no many petties and no serious exit radio and no false eyelashes and no hair appointments all the time let's say it's three years of that after that point you are so accomplished sometimes you realize you don't even want those things anymore you don't even need those things anymore um and more time, more often than not, it's less than three years. It's half that time. It's 18 months. If you're, I mean, that's for me. Like, that was, that was for me. It was about 14 months. But you, you get through it, and then you can do whatever you want. I mean, you can't go back to getting in debt, but most of the time you, you don't want to. Like, you have, a, you have a whole shift in your, in your life, in your thought process, and you don't go back. So that's what I wanted to say about um, being gazelle intense and what it means. I feel like this is like an uh, ASMR video or something because I'm not like as excited as normal, but I'm really just, I got to, you know, pace myself today because I'm just coming off of this crazy illness. Um, and again, thank you guys for everybody reaching out to me and making sure I was okay. And I am better now. So that's our Magic Money Monday episode for today. What it means to go gazelle intense. Um, Tomorrow we'll be back to talking about whatever my intuition decides we need to talk about. And I will see you later. Bye.